All right, this is going to be a very simple, very quick movement guide. Well, I hope it's quick and simple. If it's not, and then I'm sorry. But we're going to start with general controls, okay? So use the right stick to look around, use the left stick to move around. You can, I mean, honestly, you can, you can... Here. Left stick to move around, right stick to use your camera, uh, square to charge, circle or R2 to flame if you're using the reignite controls, X to jump. You have a triangle to lock your camera and look around. You also use that to skip animations, um, the, the dragon ones specifically. And then you have roll left and roll right on your R1 and L1, and you have L2 to snap your camera, and you can uh, click in your left stick to uh, have Sparks Finder. Uh, Sparks Finder is just, Sparks just tells you what the closest gem is, which apparently is the one up there. Uh, some stuff to mention about the movement. Uh, if you tap X to jump, you do a very short jump, but if you hold it, you do a bigger jump. Wow. And there will be times where you want to do a short jump, and there will be times where you want to do a bigger jump, specifically when you're charging. Sometimes you want to do smaller charge jumps, and sometimes you want to do bigger ones. But we'll get into that. Uh, charge jumping is just when you hold charge, and then you jump. You can... yeah. You would want to charge jump up uh, stairs sometimes onto different platforms. Uh, I'll get into actually a, a part of this level, Dry Canyon, where you want to charge jump across an area. Um, but yeah, you, you know, you just run around, just have have some fun running around, charge jumping, get used to how it feels. How you know, does it feel smooth? Does it feel a bit wonky? try and get used to it but the next thing we're going to go into um oh yeah we're flaming i mean you can uh you can flame and then charge i like can charge stop flame you know i'm not the best at flame charging but flame charging in this game is just charge and then you have to let go of charge for a very slight moment and then flame and it's going to be useful not really anywhere, aside from these guys, you see these guys? Where you want to charge, and then you flame, and then you charge jump into it. It's like, okay, the two things I just I just meant, I talked about, charge jumping and flame charging, boom, put into one thing. Where you charge, flame, jump. You can also just like flame and then jump into it slowly like that. But that is slow. It is slower than charge jumping. The next quick movement thing that I should talk about is stairs. Specifically, how do you go up them? How could you ever do this? Well, there's two ways, really, that are good. One is what I just did, which is just gliding up it. It's just you do a... Uh, not like... What the fuck? Anyways. You you do like a kind of like a a little a little jump and then you glide and then you just keep doing that and you keep holding up and you just keep going up. That's the idea. This is basically zero risk because if you do it wrong, then you get the alternate method, which is to bonk upstairs. As you can see, you can you can just hit your head against the stairs and you go up. Now there is. A little note I should make about this, which is that you need to bonk on like the lower half of the stair to go up. Like, like if I bonk on like the top half there, you see I just go down. You see, but if I bonk on like the lower bit, then I can actually like go up. And basically, all I'm doing there is I'm just you just spam glide basically. You just spam jump and glide, and then you either go up these stairs or you will bonk up them. You see, very good. Uh, important things to note, uh, charge through enemies and boxes to pick up the gem. You want to charge through basically all of them. You almost never want to flame an enemy, aside from these big guys, of course, that you can't charge. Look, very silly, can't charge them. But what I was saying before about, like, the flame charge jumping into the, the guys, if you want, you can do, like, this. As you can see, and in this case, it's actually kind of useful to do that. You flame, and then you basically slowly turn and 
face the way you're gonna go next. Like, with the guy down there, you just flame charge jump and you keep going forwards because you kind of want to keep going forwards from where that guy is. But with this guy, he needs to like turn, you know? He needs to be like, and then you go this way. But as you can see, I'm just charging these guys. I'm charging these chests. Charging is very good. Get comfortable just like charging around everywhere. Because the next thing we're going to be talking about is pivoting. What, what is pivoting? Well, basically pivoting is when you charge. And then you let go of charge, and then you turn, and then you charge in another direction. But obviously you don't do it like that, you do it like, you do it quicker. Some people like to combine their pivots with turning the camera. So basically what they do there is they just, they go one direction and then as they turn, they basically just snap their camera the way that they want to go to next, and then they keep going. It makes them feel more comfortable that way. As you can see, the how you see how the camera like jitters right before I keep right before I keep charging. That's because I'm snapping L2. I don't really like doing that, uh, but you can do it. But pivoting is going to be very important. It's basically how you take your movement up a level. You know, you go you go from like you know charging around most of the time, maybe uh, walking around a few areas to charging all the time almost. And then the way you start saving time f just from your movement it, uh, is to go from just charging around to pivoting basically everything. You see? Like that's that's a good example there. I go from this and then instead of just like continuing a charge, I pivot into like I pivot into like the direction that I want to go to. So instead of just like continuing the charge, I, I make sure like I touch the ground and then pivot into it. That's a, that's a little thing you can do. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd suggest just go around levels and basically just every corner you take, just pivot. You see? Just practice doing that basically. Instead of doing like this, just 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 take a take a little bit take a little bit of time and just pivot around every corner. Even pivot around these poles maybe. Could get you used to uh Keeping it tight, you know, and keeping it quick. But I think that's enough charging uh, stuff for now. I will now talk about what do I talk about? Boosted jumps. Boosted jumps are very good. I mean, I guess it kind of has to do with charging. But boosted jump is basically when when you jump normally. You see big jump you have like a set height that you can reach so like if I if I try and like jump up here as you can see I can't reach that second step like from here I can't reach it it's not not gonna happen but if you charge let go of charge and then quickly hold jump you, you like you can see like I carry the momentum like I go forwards a bit and for whatever reason, that little bit of forward momentum gives you like an extra bit of like oomph, I guess, <laughs> into your jump. And you can like make it up this, for example. This is a really good example of uh, where it's good to boost a jump. You can do it around the side. But yeah, pra practice on this stair specific, I'd say, is good because in NBS and 120, you, you'd flame the guy here and then you get these two gems and then you do that uh, up into that step. So this is a good place to, to practice it. You have the added risk of taking damage <laughs> as a motivator I guess, but it's, it's fairly simple. It might take a little bit of getting used to for the timing, um, but if you can get used to the timing of like flame charging, then you can get used to the timing of booster jumps. Because it's the same thing, but instead of pressing circle to flame, you're pressing X to jump, but you want to hold it and then hold forwards as well. So it's just charge, jump, hold forwards, simple enough. Next thing, charge jumps. I know I mentioned charge jumps, but there's a few things about charge jumps that are important to mention. One is that it is slower than just charging. If you take a straight line from any spot to anywhere else, it is slower to charge jump 
than it is to just charge forwards. It is about, I think, I think it's like 10 to 15% slower your movement speed when charge jumping compared to charging. Now I may think, oh man, that sounds like not good. Why would you want to charge jump? Well, you silly goose. Charge jumping is is good for for reaching areas that you shouldn't reach. For example, right over there, you're not meant. You can't. You can't just. You can't do that. You're not allowed. You're not allowed. But if you charge jump it, now that is what you. Now that that's that's the secret source, right? Basically, any gap you want to clear, any kind of jump you want to make, you want to charge jump it. Uh, for this one specifically, you saw there, like I like on this corner cut, I can just charge jump it. Like I don't need to do anything else. I just charge, hold, jump, boom. But for this one specifically, you need to charge, jump, and then glide. You see? Look at oh my god! Look at all that height! Look at the distance! That is crazy. You just charge, jump, glide, and then you can make about. So that, 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 that's that's how you make all the jumps basically. You charge, jump, glide. Uh, once you get used to doing those, what you really want to do is you want to limit your airtime, <clears throat> because the same way that charge jumping is slower, being in the air is slower than being on the ground, right? So. You want to like charge down onto platforms, kind of, and you want to limit the amount of time you spend in the air for your jumps. So like doing short jumps here, you know, is better than like if I do this. This is slower than doing this. You know what I mean? You can see it like this, very slow, right? But this very quick, very smooth. So whenever you can, try and limit your air time because uh, it can be slow. Although there are some times, of course, where you want to, you might want to spend more time in the air, maybe to make yourself feel more comfortable with a jump. But as you get more and more comfortable with your movement, as you get more and more comfortable with the jumps you're trying to make, just try and limit your air time. It saves, it saves, it saves a tiny bit of time for each jump, and that tiny bit of time for each jump obviously accumulates because it, 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 it's a long game, you know. You jump a lot. <laughs> Okay, so for the next bit of movement, we will be talking about spring chests, these things, right? Now, these things might look very similar. You might think, oh yeah, you just flame it and then you jump into it and then you gar grab it. So slow, so, so slow. <laughs> it's not that slow. Typically, if you if you're gonna flame a chest and then jump into it, you wanna like flame and then charge it, jump into it. But here's here's what this here's where the source is. Okay, here's where the source is. Let's go to this one actually. Let's go to this one first. If you wanna be saucy, if you if you charge into a spring chest, this the gem pops up the same way it does when you flame it. So what you can do is you can charge, jump into it. And it, it just looks like this. All that's happening there is I'm charging the, as I'm charging the spring chest, and I'm jumping right before I connect with it, so that when I do connect with it, the gem pops out, and Spyro just grabs it as soon as it pops out. That is the fastest way to do it. And if you want to be even saucier, if you have two spring chests lined up like this. You can double, you can double it. Isn't that crazy? You just charge jump, boom, you grab both. Uh, if 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 you don't feel comfortable with that, then you can uh, you can just you can't just do that. But if you're gonna flame a spring chest, I'd I'd recommend if if you see any single spring chest, charge it, charge jump it, get used to it. The more the more practice you get of it, the more comfortable you are, so just keep doing it. But if you see a lineup like this of two, as you can see, Spyro's flame is long enough that you can hit two at the same time. So if you don't feel comfortable doing double double charge or double spring chest charges, you can you can do this. And then you could even charge that one. Uh 
And now, I will. This is actually a good. This is actually good to mention now. Glide cancelling. This is something I didn't mention at the start, but it's something I should bring up. When you glide, you can press triangle to cancel it, right? And you may be thinking, oh, it's not really that useful, you know, like, when are you, why would you want to cancel your glide? Why would you glide with the intention of cancelling it? Well, it's the same thing as pivoting. You're basically, you can basically pivot, but in the air. If you see, I can turn, like, 90 degrees of the glide cancel before I, before I hit the ground. So you can make sharp turns like that. So if I if I was if there was a spring chest and I was approaching it from like this angle, for example, obviously not this one, but like in a different part of the game, you glide, and then you could keep going this way. You glide, cancel, you keep going that way. It's it's there's very few spots in the game where it's that useful. I top of my top of my the the ones that come to my mind first are the spring chest outside the terrace. Sometimes you would do a double flame and then glide cancel and then you go into the portal. Other ones are the two. Uh, the, 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 the lineup of three at the end of Jacques. Sometimes if you can, you can flame all three at the same time, but I don't do that. I just, I just flame two and then glide cancel to flame the, other, the, set, the last one more quickly. Uh, so yeah. Uh, what else is there? Right. Okay. Let's talk about 90 minutes. So this this thing, 90 minutes, is not really a movement technique, but something that you should be aware of when it comes to movement. Basically, if you leave the game open for 75 minutes, uh, Spyro just loses less height on his jumps he stays at the peak of his height from a jump longer and so jumps like this one over here become way easier um so if you're struggling to make a jump then just be aware that it would be a lot easier to make that jump if you left your game open for 75 minutes in a 120 run the, most of the jumps that benefit from 90 minutes come at the end of the run and by the time you reach the end of the run you probably have had your game open for 75 minutes so you don't need to think about it but what you should think about is that the the boost you get from the jump with 90 minutes uh, it runs out after about three hours of you getting it so if you've had your game open for like five hours then you probably no longer have it that means you got it and then you lost it. Uh, but 90 minutes plus charge jumping plus coyote timing, which is uh, when you can jump like as Spyro's falling off, basically. You can see like I'm not on the platform, but I can still jump. It, yeah, it's exaggerated when like I roll for it. Like you can see just how far out you can go. But though, but yeah, 90 minutes plus charge jumping plus coyote timing is basically like those are three are like the secret ingredients to hitting every single tough jump in this game. The toughest ones being in Dreamweavers, but any other jump that is easy to make is made even easier when you become used to the coyote timing. Basically just how far off a platform you can go before you need to jump. Uh, once you get used to coyote timing, once you get used to charge jumping like when to glide on a charge jump and uh, yeah if you just master those things you would just hit everything and mastering comes with practice so practice 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 practice, practice, practice. Uh, with glide timing on these charge jumps as well I'd say typically you want to glide when you're at the apex of your charge jump so as you can see here, I'm gliding right as I reach the like, peak of height that I'm going to get there. That's how you maximize the distance you get from your charge jump glides. Um, there's only one thing left I have on my notes, I think. And that is flame roll cancelling. Now, I didn't, I didn't unlock Toasty before doing this. But I'll, I'll go 
I'll go to Artisans to show it, or I could go to my other save file to explain it. That would have been smarter. But basically, you just flame. When you flame, right, there's a, like a cooldown. Like you can't, like you can't spam a bunch of it. As you can see, there's like a little bit of time between when the flame ends to when you can flame again. To, to basically get rid of that like cooldown period, you can flame and then you roll. And then you, <laughs> basically when you roll, you get rid of that cooldown. So like you can flame, roll, flame, and it's quicker than if you hadn't rolled. Um, that's the concept, but in practice, it's very useful for two things. One, fan chests. You can flame fan chests quicker uh, doing that, and it saves like 0 0.3 seconds. 0.3 seconds in each fan chest. It's honestly not that worth it. Um, but it accumulates the other this is the big application is in toasty so let, let's get let's get rid of this guy these dogs are the worst now typically if you're trying to deal with them you just flame and then you see you tried to flame them again and it's like you can't flame quick enough uh you can like flame and then jump to flame it but it's it's like a tiny bit slow it's not even that slow but you know what's faster? If you flame, roll, jump, and then flame again. If you roll, and then instantly jump, you can see, you cancel your roll. So what you can do, is you can flame, and then get rid of the flame cooldown by rolling, and then get rid of the roll animation by jumping, and then flame again. Like that. So you just flame, roll, jump, flame. Flame, roll, jump, flame. Flame, roll, jump, flame. Just get used to doing those inputs and then slowly start speeding it up. And you can see just how fast you can flame twice in this game. And then you can do dogs like this. You see how much faster that was? You see, you see this? You still mess up. You know, I, I still mess up, but as you can see, it's just way easier. This is this is not only faster, but once you get used to it, it's way easier than trying to do these dogs normally. So uh, yeah, I think that's about everything. I said this is going to be a simple guide, but it turned out to be a tiny bit more in depth than I was expecting. The only other bit of uh, advice I would give is to do with flights. And it's, uh, uh, in case you didn't know, staying closer to the water in flights helps you go faster. In fact, I can demonstrate this. If I turn the map on, right, where's the map? You see, you see, you can see how fast my little cursor is going uh, on the map when I'm like right below, like basically right on top of the water. But then when I go really high up, you will see how much slower the cursor moves. See how slow that is? So the higher you get in a flight level, the slower you'll go. And the closer you are to the water, the faster you'll go. The other bit of advice is if you ever need to make a turn in a flight level, just charge and then keep gliding. Never press triangle, never glide cancel. Because as you can see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to glide cancel and then spam X to glide and you'll see how long of a buffer period there is before you can glide again. You see? I almost fell like halfway down before I could glide again. So you're better off charging, because then there's no cooldown. Um, yeah. I'd say that's about it for, for advice I have. So, uh... Yeah. This is going to be paired with a 120 tutorial, probably, so... When that comes out, I will have this video linked in that description.
yeah. If there's anything else I missed, I'll talk about it at a different time. Uh, yeah. Thank you for watching and enjoy Spyro.